Hi, this is Elliot Fishman, and welcome to this talk. Tweet this. What a crazy name for a talk. But this is part of um, the RSNA uh, lecture series, and I gave this at RSNA with uh, looking at where uh, social media can improve our relationships with patients. And my part was to look at the web. Uh, Whitney Fishman Zembra spoke about a lot of the strategies and where the web is, and I was trying to be more specific as to specifics on healthcare. Looking at several things, the opportunity for radiology using social media, the challenges of a field like radiology, which tends to be conservative and not the first mover, and some of the lessons we can learn from people who have been successful. Now, if I just ask the question about mobile devices and radiology, there are many things we can use mobile devices for. All of us read journals on mobile devices. We now are able to look and give second opinions. We're able to do teleradiology. But I'm not going to speak about that. I'm going to speak about how we can use mobile devices as patient education tools and patient communication tools. Now, there's no doubt every survey shows the same thing. Patients want to control their health. They want access to their medical records. They want access to their imaging records. They want access to information about their disease and outcomes. They want access to their physicians and other healthcare providers. People are no longer willing to have medicine practice like it was Marcus Welby. Uh, remember TV show Marcus Welby? You went to Marcus Welby, you told him the problem, he told you the answer, you said, thank you, Dr. Welby, and you left. Now, it's not the case. People want to read their medical records. They want to have the imaging studies. They want to know about their disease because they can go online and find out more information than you, the physician, knows about it. And this is a millennial generation. They want access to you. And I know it's a challenge, but I think things are indeed changing. And if you look at the numbers, more than half of smartphone users have used their phone to get health information. It's more common than banking, and it increases to be used. And Apple, a couple months ago, spoke about their Apple Watch and some of the new things they're doing, and they only listed a few things. One of them was indeed health. Health, an entirely new way to use your health and fitness information. This is really a major trend. Apple targets the consumers to expect more from medicine. Look at this ad, Medical Daily. Apple Tim Cook unveils two medical apps for Apple Watch that bring doctors and patients closer together. And one of them is just this illustrations where you can show patients their disease. And whether you have an Apple Watch or not, and whether your patient does or does not, there are many different devices. Fitbits for walking and counting steps. Google Watch, sensors, and other technologies that are being developed and are changing while I'm giving you this lecture. The patient's expectations are going to impact what we do in radiology. There's no way around it, and I think it's actually good. This increased desire for interaction with radiologists, maybe they'll know who we are. The increased use of Google as Google Doc, defining what their treatment options are. Their increased use of second opinions. And the fact is, people don't trust the healthcare system. Obamacare has had its positives and negatives, but one thing it's focused on is that the variability of care depending where you go. When you look at social media, there's different ways of defining it. Computer-mediated tools that allow people to create, share, or exchange information. Social media is the future of communication. A, a array of tools and platforms that increase and enhance sharing of information. Well, the truth is, that's what medicine is. Medical information, people want to be able to share it. They want to learn more about it. They want to be able to manage it. Well, if I ask the question, do you use social media? Probably almost everybody in this room, in fact, does. Some people do more than others. And whether you're watching videos on YouTube or you have a LinkedIn account or you're using Facebook or Twitter, we are using it. An article by Eric Ranchart, although many, many radiologists are already using social media, a large number of our colleagues are still unaware of the wide spectrum of useful information that is available. So it is a challenge. Now, I think the one thing good, if you want to be very positive about things, is the web and social media gives radiology a chance to reinvent themselves. Gary Glazer was way ahead of his time. Gary spoke about the individual radiologist. We'll make it the 
invisible radiologist, which also is the individual radiologist. But most people don't know what a radiologist is. One in two Americans, this is 2008, but it's true in 2016. They don't know if we're the guy or gal who interprets the study or administers the scan. And that's hurt us. Gary wrote another article about prestige and radiology that was going backwards. That rather than viewing radiology as a well-developed medical specialty, many believe that radiology is a profession with little intellectual stimulation and that imaging services are commodities. Well, let me just tell you that commodities are not paid very well and commodities are not treated very well. Think about oil at this moment. Social media and the web give us a second chance to rebrand ourselves in our, and our role in healthcare. We can tell people what is radiology and what are radiologists. What do we actually do? What exams do we perform and why we do them and what their limitations are? What is our role in healthcare? And we can provide information to our patients at multiple touch points, both before and after imaging studies. Now you can look at it, social media can impact many different directions. Radiologist to patient, radiologist to referring physician, radiologist to radiologist, radiologist to trainees, or radiologist perhaps for research recruitment. Now there was an article in JACR a couple months back. Whitney wrote that more and more people use social media for other forms of information and so it's only natural they're going to use it in healthcare. And rather than allowing other physician specialties or random websites to set the terms of debate about the appropriateness of different imaging tests, we need to be the ones to do it ourselves. And it's very important for us to become a trusted member of the network. The idea of trusted networks has evolved and no longer simply encompasses people who they know in the real world, but communities worldwide. It's imperative that you and your group and your hospital become a trusted network. If not, people are going to look elsewhere. Very important, this idea about radiologist to patient. We can improve our visibility. Eric wrote this, Reinschild wrote this article about that. And he made some of the points. Improved visibility, increased interaction, exchange of relevant information, and distribution and discussion of information in cases for research and education. You could think about some of the potential benefits. You can think about things as simple as sharing and discussion of images with peers and clinicians. The increased impact in, and influence in the radiology community as we get the information around and available. The ability to use chats or tweets to define information or things that are of great interest, whether it's a now we have a virus, a new virus carried by mosquitoes. That information is online right away. We're not worrying about it being published in an article a year from now. Now, some people have done a really, really good job. This article by Pagaria makes the point that social media is having a major impact. A recently published comprehensive analysis of social media in the national health system, this is in England, encourages healthcare workers to utilize social media and realize the benefits for staff, patients, and their families. So in England, they're very aggressive about that. Now, if I ask the question, who is doing it well? You might start with the Mayo Clinic. You can see when you go online, here's their website, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, Pinterest, Google. They talk about and get it down personal. They talk about how they deal with patients, how the patient can interact. They provide information. They have lectures. They talk about different topics. They really try to do it for the patient. Hopkins, we're also trying to do that. We're looking at innovations in patient care. We have tours. We have directions. We have maps. You're trying to get to the patient directly. It's critical. And from the radiology perspective, now you could say, well, how do I get started? Well, I'm here to tell you that every one of us in the audience is really doing it already because all of you through the RSNA or American College are paying dues that help develop radiologyinfo.org. It's a website that was just redone, and I have to say I was involved with it for the past nine years. Uh, it's a new website. 
It's 15 years old, but it was totally redone to make it more user-friendly. It's in English and it's in Spanish. It focuses on things and it focuses only on things that are of interest to patients. It's for patients specific. Here is November issue spoke about lung cancer screening. You can see we talk about pediatrics and adults. We have chapters on understanding radiology and your radiologist, what a radiologist is, what we do. Patients can look up specific diseases. You can look up symptoms. Here's lung cancer. We speak about what's lung cancer, the age, symptoms. We talk about treatment. We talk about different tests. If you look at a CT, we can tell you what a CT is. We can tell you everything about it. We can give you critical articles. We can tell you all of the information. We don't recommend specific tests. We don't tell you about costs, but we tell you about all the information you or your loved ones will need. So it's really focused entirely on the patient. And if you look at the numbers, the site is hitting record numbers. Now over a million people are looking every month. So it's really doing well. It's interesting, the top area of interest in the English is body CT scanning. And in Spanish, it's looking at biliary calculi. So it's interesting. Now, one of the big changes with the uh, redo of the website was when you look back, way back when, when the site started, everyone was looking at things on their desktop. Well, now people are looking at things on mobile devices. Here's just some numbers. Over a four-year period, the desktop numbers have gone down significantly, and the mobile numbers have increased significantly. And that's the same thing looking at the Spanish site as well. And there's no doubt that it's not just in the U.S. people using the site, but it's worldwide. Now, it's a great example of how we can relate to patients because we're giving them really good information. It's non-biased information, but it's coming from radiology. There are a lot of other good sites you can look at. There's a site called Cancer Commons. It's an interesting site because what happens there is you Cancer Commons looks at specific diseases. You, the patient, talk about a problem you have and they help you find the right person or right group to help you with your information. It was designed by a person who was told that they had a few months to live and a number of years later are doing perfectly well. So it's an interesting site. They have lots of information on trials. They talk about different trials and biomarkers and all new sorts of things. And look at the website, provide the following information and they're gonna help you. That's somewhat interesting. It's an interesting model. They're not charging you, and it's interesting with volunteers to get this done, but it shows you the strength of the web or a different variation. Ralph Rubin, and we're sort of involved with this as well, had an eye care book on pancreatic cancer. This is really ideal for patients who have pancreatic cancer. It's a little bit specific to Hopkins. It shows them who their doctors will be, how they will get treated, what exactly will happen. But again, specific books are being developed for specific diseases at specific hospitals. So it's really very, very important. Now people talk about website ratings and there's a lot to look at, uh, top 10 health sites you can trust. And you can see it's important, consumers are looking at this. And the range of sites from the Center for Disease Control, CDC, the US government, to Cleveland Clinic, to Family Doctor, Lots of sites are being developed, and again, it's important for you to get involved and not be left behind. For researchers, or potentially for research in medicine and radiology, it may be important. Researcher recruitment. There was a question, can you use the web to recruit patients for a study? Several articles have been shown, like this article made the point that for rare diseases, it's incredible. When they went classic modality trying to find patients who had rare Fontaine protein losing enteropathy, plastic bronchitis. They got very few patients, but when they went online, 671 respondents. So again, the leading referral sources were Facebook, internet forums, and traditional websites. So it's somewhat amazing what you can get from the web. Another article, this article by Schumacher, 
Social media outlets referred 80% of all responses, making the dominant modality for recruiting the largest group of patients. So again, this can be very important for us as we look forward. And if you think about it, can it be used to expand our clinical practices and our academics? We can tell people about screening studies and why they're advantageous. We can talk about safety initiatives from image gently to image wisely. And it's very important, you know, you could imagine, I mentioned about this new uh, um, potentially epidemic due to a mosquito bite and the danger for pregnant patients, for example. But it's not just that disease. You're able to get information out so quickly. Influenza pandemics, the ability to get information out to patients instantly occurs. It's not on TV and it's not in journal articles. It's instantly. Now, in saying that, I've gone through some incredible advantages about social media and why you need to be involved. But you have to remember that errors are magnified and last forever. You have to be careful, okay? You want to be very careful how you use information. You want to make certain you don't make errors. Do not identify patients. Do not talk about patients. And again, we need to figure out how we train people not to make these mistakes. This article by Whitney Zember, using social media does carry with it the need for caution. Misuse can have major implications for patient care and even your career. Inappropriate online behavior can potentially damage your personal integrity, the patient-doctor relationship, a doctor-colleague relationship, or even opportunities for future employment. So again, common sense is always critical. So I've listed the opportunities we have. Literally, it changes the game. It's so positive if used correctly. And so the question is not whether, as I started, can social media impact your practice? It really is, it's impacting your practice right now. And you need to take control. And it's interesting, the articles about social media, and I'll just finish up with a couple articles because it was interesting. I saw this article the day I was giving the presentation and put it in my talk. Yelp is a website that typically evaluates ratings of restaurants. You want to look at what a restaurant is or a product, you go to Yelp. But now people are using Yelp to look at doctors or um, practices. And so uh, this article in JSCR looked at that, Factors Influencing Patients' Perspective of Imaging Centers. And in this article, they looked at 126 centers, and comments were coded as to either the radiologist or service items expressing either a positive or negative opinion. And they made the point that patients' perception of imaging centers is largely shaped by aspects of service quality. Schedules, receptionists, technologists, and billers heavily influence patient satisfaction. And something we always knew, it's not just your interpretation of the study. It's an end-to-end -end practice, and this Yelp did help you. And so I said, well, let me type in Johns Hopkins. Let me see how we're doing. Well, there it is, the Yelp, Johns Hopkins Hospital, 27 reviews, and an average of three stars. That's not really good. Well, five stars, here someone says, top-notch hospital, this one's five star. Kudos to all. And this patient, Catherine N., said, I cannot understand how anyone can have a bad experience at Hopkins. I've had complicated surgeries. I had my ninth surgery at Hopkins. Dr. Eckhauser was awesome, and Dr. Eckhauser was awesome. But we're not always perfect. Look at this one star. Hopkins is great if you're desperate. OMG. Or this one, I have never spoken to more people, been transferred from line to line, or waited longer on hold to get a doctor's appointment. And you can see it wasn't the quality of care. This patient was unhappy with the experience. And we need to make certain we read these things and change the experience. It's an opportunity for us to learn the good and the bad of our practices. You don't want one stars appearing online. We feel really bad for this patient, and we need to reach out to that patient and make sure we take care of the problem. Fortune Magazine said social media has come to healthcare, and it's a critical part of healthcare. Uh, what the upstarts lack in scale, they make up for in utility. Facebook pro may provide its fans with tools they love, but this new wave of social media offers tools that its users can't live without, in some cases, literally. And now when you look at Facebook, they have made some announcements a couple weeks ago about healthcare. 
Google is in healthcare. Apple is in healthcare. Twitter is in healthcare. So again, you need to care about social media because your patients care about social media. They expect you to be providing information. It's an opportunity to build a positive online relationship. You need to monitor your digital footprint and help you understand what your patients are looking at and what they're thinking about. And again, for the specialty of radiology, it's really a wonderful opportunity. A great quote by Steve Jobs, creativity is just connecting things. When you ask creative people how they did something, they feel a little bit guilty because they didn't really do it. They saw something, it seemed obvious to them after a while. That's because we're able to connect the various experiences. And I think if you're not using social media, if you're not thinking about it, this is a great time to think about it. There are several good articles or a number of articles online. And if you have any questions, email or text us, and we'll be happy to answer them. And if you want to see really good social media, look at the CTSS Facebook page. A million people are looking at it almost on a daily basis. And with that, thank you very much for your attention.